Okay, so I want to go through this maze one more time, just from the beginning, make sure everybody's on board with where we're at before we get into these corners that are a little more challenging. So I'm going to put my grid up here. Your grid on your paper should be one inch by one inch with a one inch border, right? All right. If your grid isn't perfect, okay, if they're slightly off, it's not going to be a huge deal, but we want it to be as close as we can get it. So I told you you were going to start up here. Obviously, you'll have a lot more squares than this. So we're going to start here, and I wanted you to end somewhere down here. So the first thing I had you do was a squiggly line to identify the path to make sure it actually worked, right? So your, your maze actually has a solution that's workable. You want to meander around and make it kind of curvy and all that. So you get that done, then you have these negative areas, the negative space areas that you really need to carve up and balance because when we finish, we want the whole page to have that. But we don't want to be up in this top row or in the far right side. And why was that? Why don't we want to put our base layer? The depth, depth lines are going to go up and into those. They're going to go up and to the right. So those two rows will accommodate those lines. So we don't want to draw any of our pack line into those, row, into those rows. So I'm going to do a couple of dead ends here just to show how they would work. And we'll call that good. All right. So once you have that done, you can erase every line segment that your path goes through. And with dead ends, it's going to stop and it would be a dead end, so it wouldn't go any farther. So when you get to this point, if you've done really, really light lines on your, your grid, it might be helpful to go back over those, those path lines, showing where the outside edge is just to see it easier. Something like that. So now we can see where we're walking and, and where that path would be. There's an obvious dead end here, there's a dead end, here's a dead end, and here's a solution. Once you get to that point, now we're going to put in the depth lines, which are up and to the right, anywhere your path starts or stops or turns, okay? So right here it starts. We're gonna to go to the center of that square and draw a line. It turns, it turns, it turns, it turns, it turns, it turns. This is a start, we'll put one there. Here, here, and you can see there's a lot in here. And notice it's going up into the path. You still go to the center of the square. Even if it's in the path, you do that. So you're, you would have those depth lines to the center of that square up and to the right for each time it starts, stops, or turns. Once you have that, which is about where you guys probably are right now, you want to go back and complete the wall. So you're paralleling your path with the wall. This is the bottom of the wall. Well, if this is the bottom, the top is a parallel that joins the two corners. So if it turns and goes down, the top would so turn and go down. This one goes across, goes across, goes up, goes up. You get this little one here, goes there. So you just follow those lines and it makes the top of your wall. So that is what we're looking at. And several of you have gotten to this point right here where it starts to get a little confusing. 
visually you got a lot of crap in there. So we're gonna go out and get rid of the grid that we're not using at all. And that includes your border. You can erase the border as well. So when we do that, it makes it a little easier to see. And you can look up in this wall and say, yeah, that line doesn't need to be there, that doesn't need to be there. Okay, and when you get to the corners, things are a little more challenging. So let's talk about those corners again. Your point of view is right here. So you're standing down here on the ground looking at this maze that you're about to walk into, right? From the bottom left, you're looking this way. If you walk up on this maze, this wall and this wall, these two walls would be the first walls you would see, right? And they're solid, right? You can't see through them. So you wouldn't see this line right here because that is actually on the other side of the wall, it's the bottom of this wall. And over here, you wouldn't see this line because you'd have to be inside the maze, it's the bottom of this near, this near wall on the other side. And the same would hold true here. If you jump over, you'd see this wall, but you wouldn't see this because it's the bottom of this. And as you jump over, you can start to see what you would be next to and what you wouldn't see. This right here is the end of that wall. You wouldn't see it either because it's joining on the back side. Did I miss any? So this is what your maze should end up looking like. Okay. Once we get to this point, we need to clean it up, get everything perfect, and then we will use a T-square, and I'll give you guys some uh, fine point black markers, and we're gonna go over it with black ink. But don't use black ink until we're sure we have these corner situations right, because once you put the ink in, it's not coming out. And then eventually we will color the maze walls, two different colors. The verticals would be one color. Everything that's going up and down would be one color. And then everything that's horizontal would be the other color. Okay, and we'll use cradle markers for that. I'll let you pick your colors, it's fine. Okay? I went really fast. Do you have any questions? Okay, with the rules, I would draw lightly because it's much easier to correct them if you haven't drawn dark. If you have questions, I need to look at it, okay? All right.